This is Gretna on the west bank of the Mississippi River across from New Orleans. People around here like to say that the west bank is the best bank. Now since I'm from down the Bayou, I don't really have a dog in the fight. Interestingly enough though, Gretna wasn't always known as Gretna. But first go to patreon.com slash Louisiana Dread and subscribe to get access to exclusive videos on Louisiana history like the one you're about to watch. By 1750, many of the Native Americans in this area moved to other areas. These tribes were the Chittimacha, the Choctaw, Chapatulas, and Homa. After this, the West Bank was lined with a long row of working plantations and woodlands towards the rear. The Company of the Indies granted the land here to a guy named Etienne Perrier, who then sold it to another Frenchman named Jean-Charles de Pradel. In 1750, Jean-Charles had his home constructed here and named it the Montplacier Plantation. A guy named John McDonald bought the land from the Pradel in 1815 and developed the first subdivision in what would be Jefferson Parish, and he named it McDonaldville, after himself, of course. John McDonald sold these plots to white laborers and free people of color, some of whom were formerly enslaved by McDonald himself. He intended to prepare them for a return to the African country of Liberia as part of something called the American Colonization Society's Migration Plan. Today, John McDonald is controversial for a couple of reasons, mainly because he was labeled as a philanthropist, but was also a slave owner. So there are people that are like, oh, well, he was a great guy, and there's people that's like, oh, no, he's a slave owner. But look, we're just here to tell you what really happened in historical terms, and you're free to make your own opinions on anything. A parcel of land along the river near McDonaldville was purchased by a very well-known, extremely wealthy landowner named Nicholas Noel Destrehan. Destrehan had this land surveyed and divided into lots. The main street is now called Huey P. Long, which we are on right now, but back then it was named Copernicus. Now in true Louisiana fashion, it was mispronounced as Copernicus. This community would be named Mechanicham. Almost immediately, Mechanicham became home to a bunch of German immigrants. Two years after the founding of Mechanicham, a company called the St. Mary's Market Steam Ferry Company purchased and divided a four city block wide stretch of land immediately downriver. They called this community Gretna and had a dedicated ferry landing built directly across the river from St. Mary's Market in New Orleans. These three towns, Gretna, McDonaldville, and Mechanicham, would eventually combine and all be called Gretna. On August 20th, 1913, Governor Luther E. Hall proclaimed these settlements to be the city of Gretna after a group of residents banded together to win a political battle over the parish government of the era. Gretna became a parish seat in 1884 and was often called the Free State of Jefferson because of the unrestricted gambling that occurred during that time period. With the opening of the Mississippi River Bridge, nicknamed the Crescent City Connection, it became the last bridge in the country to cross the Mississippi River. This would increase the economy considerably. However, when the West Bank Expressway was completed, it connected the area like never before. But it did have its drawbacks. Now, the construction would completely eliminate the 1400 block of Gretna, and it disconnected a neighborhood named Jonesville from the rest of the city. Gretna and the police department faced controversy in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. People who attempted to leave New Orleans via the Crescent City Connection were turned away at gunpoint. The city wasn't flooded at all but all the utilities were out and the mayor said that they couldn't take on any refugees. Over the next couple of days, a stint of door-to-door -door robberies occurred across the city of Gretna, as well as rampant looting and burning of the stores at Oakwood Mall. The police set up roadblocks on the Crescent City Connection and eyewitnesses reported that some officers threatened to shoot anyone who would try crossing over on foot and a helicopter draft was used to forcibly turn people away. Four federal civil lawsuits were filed against the city for violations of civil rights. NOPD dispatcher Patrice Jenkins tried to cross the bridge to return to her unflooded Gretna home after having walked the whole city for two days after her dispatch center was flooded. Though she had an ID to prove her status as a resident of Gretna, she said that instead of checking it, the police ordered her to turn back and they used racial slurs and they fired a warning shot over her head. While you're visiting Gretna, stop by the Louisiana State Fire Museum. 
Now, if you've been watching this series for a while, you'll know how many fires Louisiana has suffered in her history. So this is a perfect place to come read up on all of those fires. This building is also the home of the David Crockett Volunteer Fire Company No. 1. They were organized in 1841 and are the oldest continuously operating volunteer fire company in the nation. You can see the full video on this station on our Patreon channel. There are several museums here too, like the German American Cultural Center that goes into the very much so detail of German contributions to Louisiana from 1720 to today. One of the better festivals to attend is the Gretna Fest here at the beginning of October. Tons of entertaining musical performances and delicious vendors line up the rows here for a wild time. And we couldn't bring you this information without your support on Patreon. And we'd like to thank all of those who have already contributed and encourage anyone watching this video right now to consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Louisiana Dread. For more Louisiana history, horror, folklore, and culture, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'm Kyle Crosby, and this is Louisiana Dread Quick History.